Hi everyone, this module we have to discuss the concept of nucleation in this unit from analytical techniques third semesters block 1 unit 4. In this module, learn the concept of nucleation, supersaturation, co-precipitations, differences in co-precipitation and post-precipitation, homogeneous solutions, how to wash washing of precipitate, organic precipitants and some important function. There are two basic approaches to quantitative analysis. One is by measurement of volume and other is based on measurement of weight. In titrometry, the volume of a solution is accurately known concentrated required to react quantitatively with the solutions of the substance to be determined is measured. On the other hand, the quantitative analysis by weight known as gravimetric analysis involves the process of isolating and weighing an element or a definite compound of the element in a pure form as possible. Here the gravimetric methods are widely applicable and employed for the quantifications of both inorganic and organic entities. In spite of wide applicability, the gravimetric methods of analysis have certain limitations. Ideally, a precipitating reagent should react specially or if not that selectively with the analyte. The best known examples of a specific reagents usually Quoted is dimethyl glyoxime, which is used for precipitating Ni2. However, the selective reagents, which are more in number, react with a limited number of species. The nucleation is a physical reaction which occurs when components in a solution start to precipitate it. Consider examples of nucleation, a supersaturated sugar, water is used to analysis to make rock candy with the sugar crystals nucleating and growing into crystals. The particle size of solids formed by various largely at one end or colloidal suspensions whose tiny particles of a diameter of 10 to the power of minus 7 to minus 4 centimeters are invisible to the naked eye. The mechanism of precipitate formation is much more complicated than you would comprehend. The discussions up to this stage clearly points out that for the purity of the precipitate, the size of the particle is very critical. It is known that different experimental variables influences the particle size. Thus, some of the important ones are yeah, precipitate solubility, temperature, reactant, concentrations and rate which they are mixed. The word supersaturation is one which contains greater concentrations of the solute than permitted by the equilibrium solubility at the temperature under considerations. Essentially, supersaturation is an unstable state just before the precipitation begins. This unstable state may be brought to see of brought to state 
of equilibrium by addition of a crystals of the solute or some other substances or by mechanical means namely shaking or stirring the precipitate with mother liquor in order to improve the nature of the precipitate the above approaches are adopted during the actual precipitation process this is achieved by digesting or aging the precipitate it amounts to be fact that if the precipitate is allowed to stand which contact with the mother liquor frequently at elevated temperature for some times before filtration the smaller particles go into solutions making it super saturated with respect to larger particles here consider some other examples what are those silver chlorides or gelatinous iron or ferrous hydroxide this happens when compound is either very insoluble or the particles do not differ much in size the digestion at elevated temperature before filtration is successful in increasing the particle size of crystalline precipitates like barium sulfate and calcium oxalate the next term is coprecipitation already we discussed in that previous in previous chapter the coprecipitation in unit 3 the precipitates separating from a solutions are not as a rule but contains larger amount of foreign substance including mother liquor the precipitates may contain varying amounts of impurities depending upon the nature of the precipitate and the conditions of precipitation the contaminations of the precipitate by substances that are normally soluble under conditions of precipitation is called coprecipitation how to minimizing the coprecipitation in foregoing discussions we have seen that precipitates predominantly become impure due to coprecipitation it may also be pointed out that there are no universal rules to reduce coprecipitations but in fairly general they can be enumerated as under the precipitation should be carried out from dilute solutions the reagent should be mixed slowly with constant stirring precipitation should be carried out from hot solutions provided the solubility and stability of the precipitate permits the solubility increases the degree of super saturation decreases coagulations of the precipitate is assisted thereby reducing the salt formation the volatile velocity of crystallization is increased thus leading to better formed crystals what are the role of coprecipitation from the separations of trazer quantities we have seen that coprecipitation is determinate as far as the purity of precipitate is concerned but it can be very useful for the separations of trazer quantities of radioisotopes the radioisotopes produced by nuclear reactions are usually present in extremely small quantity and ordinary precipitation procedures generally fail at such a low concentration the separations of unweighable amount of trazer amount from macro quantities of target materials by coprecipitation usually involves two steps first the trazer is separated and concentrated from the target material by coprecipitation thus the role of carrier is to carry the trazer amount by surface adsorption the second the trazer is separated out and concentrated from the carrier it is desired to user carrier substances that can be separated from the trazer easily in subsequent operations generally 
the tracers are co precipitated by surface adsorption on unspecified carriers the co precipitation is important as for as the contaminations of a precipitate with foreign material is concerned but there is another process called co post precipitation which makes a precipitate impure in this case as the name suggests the primary precipitate separates out in a pure form and the second phase of the foreign substance which is slightly soluble form afterwards the second phase is therefore not completed but post precipitated post precipitations can occur only when the supernatant is supersaturated with respect to some components with critic crystallizes fairly slowly in other words it occurs with sparingly soluble substances which form super saturated solution and usually have an ion in common with the primary precipitate what are the differences in co precipitation and post precipitation here the several differences we differentiate between co precipitation and post precipitation if the precipitate is left in connect with the mother liquor is the contamination increases with time in precipitation post precipitation the contamination increases the faster the solution is agitated by the mechanical or thermal means in the case of post precipitation the contamination increases the faster the solutions is agitated by either the mechanical or thermal means the magnitude of contaminations by post precipitations may be much greater by the co precipitation what is the concept of precipitation from homogeneous solution one of the major objectives of a precipitation reaction is the separations of a pure solid in phase in order to obtain with a minimum contamination e2 is desired to produce large well defined crystals rather than micro crystals in other words a compact and dense precipitate instead of a gelatinous precipitate is required the gelatinous to be used in the preparations of precipitates with the desired physical characteristics were offered by some scientist un weman what are those this they can be broadly classified under four different categories generating the precipitate anions by slowly hydrolyzing the esters or some suitable compounds arising the ph of the solutions by slowly boiling with area synthesizing the reagents with the solutions by reactions of the different components releasing the cation slowly by changing its oxidation state or destroying it complex it should be noted that the above classifications does not cover all the different examples available in the literature but provides a wide coverage this is generating the anion by hydrolysis the anions have been generated in solutions to precipitate insoluble salts by controlled hydrolysis of corresponding esters or some suitable salts in this class the esters have been mostly used consider that precipitates of phosphates insoluble phosphates can be precipitated with phosphates generated from triethyl phosphate or metaphosphoric acid the esters of oxalic acid serves as a source of oxalate ions as per the equations the hydrolysis of sulfamic acid serves as a convenient method for the generalizations of sulfate ions according to the reaction the reaction 
has been used for separations and determinations of barium ion hydrolysis of diethyl sulfate has been used to precipitate calcium strontium barium and lead sulfate the many sulfur compounds have been suggested as the source of sulfide ions but thioacetamide is by far more popular and put to practical use and how to synthesizing the reagents by reactions of different components up to this point we have focused our attentions mainly on the generations of inorganic anions to precipitate metal ions but the fact remains that there is a very huge list of organic reagents employed for the precipitations of cations here one of the major drawback in this in the use of organic reagent is the nature of the precipitate most of these precipitates obtained by organic reagents are fluent in nature in view of certain inherent advantages of organic reagents serious efforts have been made to improve the nature of the precipitates subsequently by synthesizing them in solutions in the presence of metal one of the best example in this category is offered by the precipitations of ni2+ by synthesizing dimethyl glyoxide by the reactions between diacetyl and hydroxyl amine these are all some examples of written by acetyl and hydroxyl amine and salicyl aldehyde and salicyl doxane the copper ferroin has been synthesized in situ by the reactions between nitrate and phenyl hydroxyl amine to produce the insoluble precipitates of chelates of copper iron and titanium from homogeneous solution this precipitate is stoichiometric and can be weighed directly while the conventional precipitate is contaminated and must be ignited to the oxide when nitrous acid is reacted with 1,2 phenyl diamine in equal solutions in the presence of either copper or silver etc washing of precipitate when the precipitation is carried out from the solutions invariably only one of the constituents is precipitated keeping many other in solution the object of washing the precipitate is to remove the impurities contaminating the precipitate as completely as possible in the process of washing only surface impurities will be removed this means that under optimum conditions the wash liquid will in general remove only the mechanical mixed and relatively loosely held impurities impurities which are strongly adsorbed by the precipitate may resist washing successfully and even some of the mechanically mixed supernatant liquid may remain protected by the capillary forces there some additional information and some examples some precipitates tend to oxidize during washing and such precipitates cannot be allowed to run dry in order to circumvent the problem the precipitate should be washed with a special solutions which reconverts the oxidized product into the original one here cu2+ is not gravimetrically determined has sulfide but it is known of separations of copper the copper sulfide precipitate which has a tendency to be oxidized to copper sulfate should be washed with acidulated hydrogen sulfide water these are all some other example regarding to that especially for that uh, hexaqua iron the formation of this what here pentaqua hydrated 
ferrous the addition of an acid to wash solutions will prevent hydrolysis of ferric or similar salts in the nutshell the wash solution should have the following characteristics it should not have any dissolution action upon the precipitate but to remove the foreign impurity foreign impurities easily it should not peptidize the precipitate it should not form any volatile or insoluble product with the precipitate it should be easily volatile at the temperature of drying of the precipitate it should not contain any substance which is likely to interface with subsequent determinations in the filter during washing the precipitate of the following general protocol should be observed since no precipitate is absolutely insoluble minimum volume of the washing liquid required to remove the objectionable material should be used it better to wash the precipitate with a number of small portions rather than one or two large portions the wash liquid should be well drained between each washing rather than adding fresh portions of the washing violet solutions still remain on the filter what are organic precipitates advantages and disadvantages the organic reagents find a variety of applications in inorganic analysis these applications encompasses their utility as precipitant titrant and indicators calorimetric reagents extractant and masking agent besides these there are some minor applications in various analytical methods one of the major applications in the real sense is the use of organic reagents as precipitating agent the separations of one or more ions from mixtures can be made with the aid of organic reagents with which they yield sparingly soluble and often colored compound these organic compounds have high molecular weight and yield a relatively large amount of precipitate with a small amount of the metal ion disease turns will increase the sensitivity of the gravimetric procedure yield of a large amount of precipitate minimizes weighing errors ideally the organic precipitate should be specific it should give a precipitate with one particular ion but is it difficult to attain these ideal conditions however it is usual that the organic reagents will react with a group of ions and frequently by rigorous control of experimental conditions it is possible to precipitate only one of the ions of the group here some other classification five types of reactions have been identified with these organic reagents formation of chelate compound probably the largest number of recorded cases of precipitations by organic compounds involves the formation of unionized chelate complexes most of the organic reagents which form chelates with the metal ion contain both an acidic or a basic functional group the metal ion increases the metal ion interacts with both of these groups and itself becomes a member of heterocyclic ring one of the best example of this class of compound is 8 hydroxy quinoline also known as 8 quinoninol or oxime it forms insoluble complexes with the number of metal ions the formation of salt like compound the organic reagents also form salt like compounds at a low solubility with certain cations sodium salt of tetraphenyl boron precipitate k plus ion the formation of adsorption complexes or lack of indefinite composition the lack appears to be formed between an organic reagents and the hydrated oxides of a metal 
the nature of the lake is not exactly known. Apparently, the combination seems to take place on the surface of the colloidal particles of the oxide, resulting in most of these cases in the productions of a characteristic color. There are many applications of lag formations in colorimetric system. Sorry, analysis. With a few in gravimetric work. The reductions to metal, some of the organic reagents have been used for the reductions of noble metals like platinum and gold. Hydroquinone and certain related compounds have been used for the reductions and determinations of gold. What are the uses of homogeneous precipitation? Here, the use of different organic reagents in homogeneous precipitation has been cited earlier in this chapter. The urea is familiar example which raises the pH by slowly hydrolysis to precipitate metal, hydrous oxides and basic salt. The gradual hydrolysis of corresponding esters leads to the precipitations of phosphate, sulfates and oxalate. Thioacetamide is a convenient and inoffensive source of hydrogen sulfide to heal granular precipitates of metal sulfide. The reagents with some important functional group here dioxymes. These are all the dioxymes and some example we put nitroso compounds. In that nitroso compounds, the well known derivatives of nitroso hydroxy, hydroxyl amine with copper, with the transition metals only. Generally, this type of precipitating agents react with that metal ions with different oxidation state to formation of precipitates. Amino acids, several amino acids have been employed as gravimetric reagents. Anthranilic acid, precipitate. A number of metal ions, copper, zinc, cadmium, cobalt, and silver. The reagents in the form of its water soluble sodium salt is used to precipitate metal ion. The precipitates are pure and easy to filter and wash. Because of lack of selectivity, it is mostly used for the determinations of metal ions in pure solutions. The sulfur compounds, the number of sulfur compounds, particularly those with sulfhydryl group, have been recommended for gravimetric work. This may include thionalide, mercaptoxyl thiazol, phenyl thiohydronics. These are all some other examples for this. Salt type compound. Those are also to formation of this complex that is helps to gravimetric analysis with transition metals like titanium, stannous, thorium, etc. What are the advantages and disadvantages? The advantages of this here organic precipitates for the metal ions after a wide variety and the list is very large to suppose met different eventualities particularly with reference to interferences. Many of the complexes are very insoluble and the metal ions can be quantitatively precipitated. A good number of reagents are fairly selective yielding precipitate with only a limited number of cations. The organic precipitants have often a high molecular weight and yield large amount of precipitate with a smaller amount of metal ion. The number of organic reagents yield precipitates with metal ions which are coarse or bulky and therefore easy to handle for gravimetric work. The disadvantages. The disadvantages with all the advantages cited above the fact reminds the use of organic reagents is not free of problems and there are some which need serious consideration. As pointed out earlier, one of the important problems 
with these reagents their purity it has to be ascertained before the use the several organic reagents have a limited aqueous solubility and therefore there are a there is a danger of these reagents contaminating the metal complex precipitates used for metal ion separations the many of the metal complexes do not after a suitable weighing from form a definite compositions and therefore can only be used for the separations of metal ion the summarize this unit in this unit we have to learn the gravimetric analysis is a technique of quantifications of a variety of inorganic and organic at the macro level its prime importance lies in its utility for the standardization of stock solutions used for the calibrations or checking the performance of instruments employed for analysis in gravimetric analysis is a sparingly soluble precipitate of the dissolved constituent should be should separate out from the bulk in a pure form and it should be possible to weigh it in a form corresponding to a definite composition the lars well defined crystalline precipitates thus formed are easy to filter and less prone to contaminations two main process namely coprecipitations and postprecipitations can significantly affect the purity of the precipitate coprecipitation is precipitations of impurities which normally would have been soluble along with main precipitate while in post precipitation impurities are precipitated after the main precipitate is formed after having known mechanism of these two process conditions are identified to keep their contributions low one significant point that emerges out of the discussions is that in order to obtain pure crystalline precipitate the rate of precipitations is to be controlled a significant advancement in this directions is the introductions of technique of homogeneous precipitation the list of organic reagents used as a precipitating agents for inorganic analysis a very large and offer a wide choice under different experimental conditions it may be easier to attain selectivity with these reagents a discussions of some of the important categories of these reagents i presented some theoretical and practical aspect associated with the utility of this precipitants or highlight these are all references textbooks these are all important questions for your examinations generally asking in that nucleation supersaturation mother liquor co precipitation and post precipitation homogeneous solution and synthesizing reagents by organic reactions with different compound washing of precipitate advantages and disadvantages etc thank you